the Gulf of Mexico is studying the impacts of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill on blue crab larvae. To study crab larvae, we're conducting plankton tows at various sites near the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and also far away. Blue crab larvae are planktonic, which means that they float around with the currents and are microscopic. In order to sample these blue crab larvae, we tow a net with a very fine mesh to the surface of the ocean. The Tulane scientists wanted to do full days of transects moving from shallow water out towards the spill site, um, covering a pretty significant amount of distance for four days. One of the key pieces of equipment for the plankton work with Tulane was a, a winch that you essentially used to let out and pull back in the net. And it's pretty heavy, especially when it's um, been waterlogged with being towed through the ocean for a while. Unfortunately, the winch had a problem, so we had to have our own crew pull in the net by hand for hours and hours and hours each day. Blue crabs uh, live near shore, but they go offshore to spawn their larvae, which stay in the Gulf of Mexico for about 40 days. So we think there's a potential for the oil spill to have a big negative impact on the number of crab larvae out here. The plankton community is a very important part of the marine ecosystem. In fact, it's the base of the food web. Blue crabs in particular are important also to the uh, fishery of the Gulf of Mexico when they're adults. We then take the sample back to the lab and look at it under a microscope. We're going to compare the number of larvae we find in the samples and also the condition of the larvae. From the scientists' work at Tulane, it looks like this is how the oil and dispersion is entering the food chain. So it's not just the effect on the blue crab larvae, but also on the many species of marine life that feed on blue crab.